So all week in Parliament, the focus has been on power prices and where to on Australia's energy crisis. And I'm pleased to say that with me this afternoon is the Minister for Energy and the Environment, Josh Frydenberg. Thank you very much for your time. Nice to be with you, So Labor's spent most of this week claiming that Sydney household electricity prices have gone up on average $1,000 since the Coalition came to office. They didn't return to that figure today. What is the figure? Well, the Labor Party have been uh, very tricky indeed. And as you know, they today when we uh, moved a motion of no confidence, uh, or a motion against the, the Leader of the Opposition, which was carried by the Parliament, uh, it was over this use by them of that $1,000 increase in average Sydney household bills. They haven't come back to it either in that, um, in that debate or in subsequent debates in the Parliament. Uh, what we have seen is power prices in Sydney increased by around $300 from July 1. A very substantial... 2013. 17. From 2017. Right. A very substantial increase. So uh, what's the figure from the time the Coalition came in, 2013? Mm -hmm. It's in the document that we tabled in the Parliament and it says that prices, depending on your network provider, could be as high as $320 increased over that period since 2013, or indeed there could have been a decrease up to $177. Because yesterday in Parliament you said since the start of the Coalition Government in 2013, prices across average Sydney households on standing offers have varied from increasing by $1 to falling by $473. I know, I, 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 I made it very clear in that statement that it was in the from the latest AER report, which was only to May. So that report Sorry. did not include... The latest increase. Correct. Right, so the latest increase then, the figure you mentioned then was 300... Could be over $320 that the power prices have increased right. uh, down to a fall of $177 over the course of 2013 to 2017. See, the point is that when we came to power, we abolished the carbon tax. That saw a major decrease in power bills substantially right across the country and indeed in Sydney and too. Um, since that time there have been some increases substantially of power prices and that's why that net figure uh, is nothing like um, the thousand dollars that the Labor Party claimed and what they did in claiming that thousand dollars was they manipulated uh, data that they said came from the Australian Energy Regulator and the Australian Energy Market Commission when that data didn't even exist. All right, but, but, but to the claim that you made in the Parliament yesterday, as you now say, that, that was only up to May, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I said the... that. And to the, to the, it's the state of the market report. Right. And then today we've also talked about how from July 1 there have been additional... So you're not, you're not saying most people have seen a fall in their... No, price. not at all. To the contrary. Mm. We're saying that people are doing it really tough power prices have increased and you know we understand the public's concern with that but their genuine concerns the public has Bill Shorten doesn't have one. Well let's come to what you're doing about it um, since repealing the carbon tax the industry has been waiting for the government to come up with a decision on rules for the energy market um, <laughs> here's what the head of the Australian industry group Innes Willox told me yesterday on the program the childlike squabbling has to stop uh, he said business the business community is appalled by what they're seeing uh, and uh, what they are seeing and hearing from the government. So when is it going to stop? When are we going to see a policy? Well, as you know, uh, we have been squabbling in the parliament for a decade, mm. and that hasn't served the public well. That doesn't mean that we should have uh, had kumbaya on bad policies like the carbon tax. That was not the right way for the country to go. Now, we commissioned the chief scientist, Alan Finkel, to undertake an extensive report into the electricity system in the wake of that blackout in South Australia. He came back with 50 recommendations. We quickly adopted 49 of them. The 50th was the clean energy target, and we have said that that is under consideration by the government. Did he miss something? Alan Finkel did uh, this thing about dispatchable power. Did, did he... Was it a flawed report? No, it wasn't a flawed report. I think it was an excellent report. And indeed, those recommendations that we have accepted to date uh, are going to be very important in stabilising the system, like the requirement that large generators... But when, he, when, he, when he came up with a recommendation, the central recommendation yeah. for a clean energy target, I'm just wondering why you haven't... You know, it's three months or so now since he made this recommendation. 
Was he missing something? Well, what we wanted on top of his report was to get additional advice from the Australian Energy Market Operator. And they indicated to us that not only have we got some short-term supply shortfalls, but if Liddell was to close in 2022, there would be a supply shortfall of 1,000 megawatts. So the clean energy target is recommended by Alan Finkel it wouldn't deal with that shortfall? Well, look, that could be disputed by various I'm just wondering what you think. Would that well, clean energy target... We, want, we, want, we, want, we wanted more advice mm. and we want greater comfort that the stability of the system is secured, you see. Mm. Hazel, and, but I'm just asking you, Minister, the, the clean energy target Alan Finkel recommended, would it or wouldn't it address that dispatchable shortfall? Well, we think that more work needs to be done to ensure sufficient dispatchability. That work is being, has been undertaken by the Australian Energy Market Operator as the key expert body. But I actually think the work that was done by AEMO, David, complements the work that's been done by Dr Finkel, because one of the things that Dr Finkel recommended was a strategic reserve, which is a form of capacity payment to ensure that dispatchable power keeps going. That's what uh, AEMO have also recommended. And you're attracted to that? I think there's a lot of merit in that, because what we're seeing in the system is a dramatic transformation. Historically, we've only had coal and gas, uh, which is reliable base load power. Now we've got intermittent sources of power, so we do need to ensure reliable dispatchable power is available when so needed. Would, would a strategic reserve, maybe you call it a reliable energy reserve, alongside a clean energy target, would that deliver <laughs> the outcome you want? I know you want to try to pin me down, no, as, a, as a David Spears interview right. always does, but um, in terms of the clean energy target, it's a serious recommendation. Uh, we're giving it due consideration, but we need to fully understand the implications for price and for stability, which are our primary focus. Do you need any more information? Uh, we're continuing to talk to the expert bodies uh, and uh, continuing to, to do the analysis. Do you need more reports? Well, we're always seeking further advice. The Australian Energy Market Commission uh, continues to provide us with advice. For example, we, you know, we've recently had a discussion with AGL over Liddell and you know, getting a good understanding of how Liddell is operating, at what percentage of its capacity it's operating, what are its bidding practices, all those sort of things are important for, uh, for the government to be aware of. So you, you need more information on other coal-fired power plants and what impact their climate. Well, I'll give you an example where more information is needed. Um, in the AEMO report, they recommended doing an effectively an audit of the existing coal fleet, seeing which ones could be upgraded and what sort of capacity would be available. So you need that? That, that work is going to be undertaken and AEMO is the best body to do that. When does that come back? Well, that will be done as soon as possible. Obviously, they have to do extensive work, talk to the generators, but you know that work will be done over coming months. And you can't have a decision before you get that? Well, we are working through the issue. I don't want to, to give you a definitive answer um, as to the timing, other than to say the Prime Minister has indicated... I mean, it's, forget me, it's the industry here. You yeah. know, as Innes Willocks, head of the industry group, they're the big emitters. The squabbling's got to stop. Time for a decision. Yeah, but we've got to get it right. And the Prime so it could be a few well, months away. Well, the, well, the Prime Minister's indicated that he would like to see a response uh, to this final recommendation by the end of the year. Um, obviously, the Finkel recommendation of a clean energy target was a 2020 idea, and that is more than two years away. Talking of AGL, have they been shorting the market in their plans to close Liddell? Well, there's, it's a complicated issue because with Liddell, they are relying on coal, um, which uh, has had some problems both on the rail side in terms of transport, transporting it in to the power station, but also there's been some industrial disputation. So it's a more complex question, but there has been some bidding behaviour that... Uh, people are concerned about within the New South Wales coal-fired generated market and that's why I asked the Australian Energy Regulator to have a good look at this issue. So what's that? The, the Australian Energy Regulator, have a look at what AGL's bidding into the market. Having a, having a look, not just on AGL, have a look at the bidding practices. You may remember we had a discussion about the Queensland generators yep. and how they were aggressively bidding at the top of the band, uh, particularly over the summer months. Profiteering. Of well, it certainly was uh, playing the system to maximise the returns you that they could that provide. might be happening in New South Wales? Well, I'm concerned by some of the bidding behaviour, but it's not for me 
to make a deliberation that is for our expert bodies and the Australian Energy Regulator have received a letter from me asking them to do exactly that. But from what you see of their behaviour, there's a concern? Well, there is a concern, uh, but it's more complicated. And the, the reason why it's more complicated is because of the access to coal. You see, in the Latrobe Valley, the coal-fired power stations sit on top of mine. So basically, it's just shoveling it in and keeping it going. In New South Wales, the, the proximity of the mines to the power stations is not as great. I see the ACCC chairman, Rod Sims, says AGL's refusal to sell Liddell is not a breach of competition laws. Do you agree? Well, we uh, have said to the company we would like them to either sell it or to, uh, to keep running it for another five years. They've agreed to take that to the board. That's where our focus has been. They've also said the board's looked at this previously. Yeah, I mean, and to credit to AGL that they have signalled for some time that they were going to close. But what has changed is the, the, the way the market is operating. And, David, it's fair to say that the closure of Hazelwood, uh, which was pushed by the Victorian government and others, has not provided um, the... Uh, the situation or the environment that people were expecting. So just finally, if AGL instead built a solar plant with a gas peaking plant at Liddell, would there be a problem? Well, they have asked us for 90 days uh, to come up with a plan about what an alternative source of equivalent, dispatchable, reliable would that supply would be. Well, you'd have to see it. Um, right now, we know what one option is, which is to keep it going, what another option is, which is to sell it, and there are no doubt will be interested parties out there already dealt or a solar it, gas or, 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 or an alternative. Now, Would that be all right? Well, it's too early to say. Our preference is obviously for them to keep it going. Uh, there's been lots of commentary in the market as to why they may not want to. If they believe it's truly a worthless asset, then test the market, put it up for sale. And a final one, a final, final one. I know this is <laughs> a question I never would have thought of asking a, a Liberal minister, but uh, are you going to regulate prices? Look, uh, we don't have plans to do that, obviously. It's not a yes or a no, oh, Josh. No, well, I, OK, well, let me be... Yeah. Awesome. Competition is the best way to go rather than regulating prices. So we're not looking to regulate prices. There's your answer. Okay. But if you look at Victoria, they recently had a report into the retail market and they suggested that they should re regulate prices. The problem with regulating prices, as example, as illustrated in the ACT, is it's not a recipe uh, for lower prices because prices there are regulated, but they've just gone up by 20%. And the and the, and the organisations or the companies that are most affected by regulated prices are the smaller ones because if the price is set artificially low, then they can't actually absorb that level of risk, whereas the big players can. And if it was such a good idea, why wouldn't we regulate petrol prices, milk and bread? Indeed. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Great to be with you, Minister David. For the, uh, for the environment and energy, Josh.